Yes, I'm a YouTuber. Yes, I make software engineering content. And yes, I'm telling you that YouTube may be ruining your career. Even at the risk of sounding like a massive hypocrite, I still think I have a strong point. So let me explain why I think YouTube may be ruining your career. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I do a lot of AMAs there, and I also do my best to respond to all the messages you sent me over there. If there's one thing I can take away from the thousands of messages I've gotten so far is that engineering talent today, both inexperienced and experienced, is very confused. Because the competition is so fierce, software engineers feel the pressure to make a lot of decisions very early in their career. Picking the best school, learning the best programming languages, picking up the right stack, working on the most meaningful projects, so on and so forth. And when you resort to YouTube to find the answers, it may not be helping you at all. Consider the topic of best programming language to learn or the best stack to pick up. You can do a quick YouTube search and you will find that there's a video literally for every language or stack claiming that that one is the best. See, predicting the next great programming language is a fool's errand. By the time you're pretty decent at it, something else would be the next big thing. The answer to your programming language confusion is simple as this. If you are starting out, just pick something mature that feels good and run with it. I will promise you that you will not be stuck with it for the rest of your life. I'm not saying don't try out new things. It's okay to try out new things once in a while. No harm in that. But if you keep switching your stack in hopes of being adept at the newest, coolest things, your skills as a software engineer aren't going to progress. In my 13 years of working professionally as a software engineer, from big projects to small, top tech companies to obscure startups, I've never had the programming language, the framework, or the stack come up as the main reason for success or failure of a product. Yes, there can be some performance implications and you can make changes to your stack for optimizations. However, this is a continual process as your project matures. In the real world, you almost rarely get to start from scratch where you evaluate a bunch of stacks and pick the best. And the reality is that the projects you will work on will almost always be a combination of programming languages, frameworks, runtimes, and platforms. It's not just the programming languages though. Because of how convenient it is to make YouTube videos, a lot of people these days are opting to do so on literally every topic. All you really need is a decent phone camera, a computer, simple editing software, and access to the internet, and you're off making videos for the entire world. And the algorithm is driven by the thumbnail and is heavily influenced by mass activity rather than pure quality. There is in fact no real verification on YouTube for content quality. As a result, you've got a lot of misleading software engineering advice given by people who aren't really qualified to give that advice. Heck, people that have taken four months of bootcamp and barely started their own career are some of the top videos on YouTube giving career advice on software engineering. This is downright dangerous. And to add to that, due to the rise of TikTok and stories and reels, it's all about short form content. So we have an entire generation growing up with an attention span of a goldfish. Combine these two and you've got people with barely any experience in the field giving career advice in less than 10 minutes so their audience with a very short attention span can remain engaged. But even worse than being given misguided information is the sense of false competence it can give you. Say you're a young and aspiring software engineering student. You've learned the basics of client-server architecture and you can build some simple apps, which gets you curious on something like how Instagram works. Of course, you hit up YouTube and search building Instagram. And then you come across a lot of these videos that claim to build Instagram or an Instagram clone in two hours, four hours, 24 hours, whatever that is. So you think, let's take a look at how these folks are building an Instagram clone. You watch the video, however long that is, let's say this one. We are going to be building an Instagram clone with React. So we come to you with another banger. This is also going to have Firebase and user authentication and is going to be deployed online. And uh, it has all the functionality, the bells and whistles of Instagram. Here is actually Instagram, right? And then here is our app that we're going to be building. And at the end, it does look and work like Instagram. So you follow the tutorial and build your own version of Instagram. The next day, you go attend your data structures and algorithms class and your old professor is teaching you boring data structures like link lists and some cryptic algorithms that are putting you to sleep. And that too in some ancient language like C++. And you sit there wondering why you are putting up with this nonsense when you've just built Instagram without having to deal with any of this. This is where you lose interest, get disconnected, and start building your own cool clones of various applications in many different awesome languages and frameworks. 
Well, congratulations, you've just entered the world of tutorial hell and the amazing sense of false competence it provides. Look, I've got nothing against these channels or videos. These guys have actually done a great job of showing you how React or Swift works in conjunction with something like Firebase, which will abstract out all the individual components like storage, messaging, etc., and makes life easy on you. That's great if you're looking for mostly UX design or trying to figure out a functional mock-up of an app. But this is by far from being a production-ready application, let alone being as complex as Instagram. The problem isn't the video itself, but the impression it can leave to the uninitiated. If you're walking away watching these videos thinking that you've learned how to build Instagram, you're in a world of pain. If you really want to understand what goes in to making something as complex and massive as Instagram, you have to choose the right content. If you're mostly interested in app or front-end development, watch videos like this. We thought ourselves, um, would be awesome if you could just design the state of our application, our entire application as a tree. And if you're now shaking your head, um, that's exactly the, the same thing that we did. Um, we initially threw this idea off because applications, mobile applications are inherently integrated. You've got, you know, awesome views that animate, um, that morph into one another, um, where you really need a state machine, um, if you saw the previous slide. If you're interested in full stack development, watch videos like this one. A few critical things, it's not in code. It has to be language neutral. Uh, here you see this is an example, we use JSON. Second, we define resources. Everything is resource first uh, at flow. And that's why here you see a definition of a user, user's ID, email name, status. And then by convention, to create a user, you use an object that is the resource name underscore form. So in our language, forms are used to create instances of resources. Or if you're into infrastructure engineering, watch videos like this. And of course, you want to be able to test it no matter how you call that service, whether you call it directly, whether you call it indirectly. You want to make sure that your requests are decorated with the right context so that you can fail universally just as if the service was really down in production without actually taking it down. So this is all great. This is sort of a point to point perspective. But imagine now that you've got 100 microservices, and each one of those might have a dependency on other services or multiple other services. It's a big challenge. I know some of these are older videos, and the numbers have probably quadrupled by now, but hopefully, this gives you an idea of the scale you're dealing with. Step back and think for a second. If one event took one second to happen, one billion events would take 32 years to happen. And some of these largest applications in the world, the likes of Instagram, Facebook, Netflix, are processing over a billion events every minute. This is what you need to think about when you really want to build an Instagram clone. Those are the problems you'll be solving when your app goes into production and needs to handle real, fast-growing user base. If you look at the topics some of these architecture videos talk about, it's all about things like storage, computing, load balancing, caching, partitioning, hashing, consistency, leasing, and so much more. The foundation for all of these is a solid understanding of data structures and algorithms. I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, Rust, Go, C++, Node.js, React, Flutter, Flask, whatever that is, these are just tools to help you solve the problem, not the solution itself. So think twice before you dismiss your old professor in your data structures and algorithm class to follow the next great trend on YouTube. There is a reason why every school teaches this stuff, and there is a reason why you should be paying attention. So does that mean that you should totally avoid YouTube? Of course not. You should instead be smarter about how you spend your time on YouTube. Look, no content is inherently good or bad. Even the most useless content can have merits on the grounds of entertainment. As the audience, it is your responsibility to understand your context before spending hours of your time. Let's take the Instagram clone videos again, for example. If you are looking to get started with building UX in React, that's a great video for you because unlike other usual boring tutorials, they actually build something functional. It is also useful if you have never built an app or are just trying to build one. However, it's not a good video if you're planning to learn how Instagram works. So think about your own context and quickly evaluate videos based on what you are trying to achieve before you spend time watching them end to end. Look at the topics they cover, see if they make sense and research about them. When you're spending your money, you cross shop. You make sure it's a reputable brand and do your due diligence, right? Why not do the same with your time? Remember, time is money. And in addition to that, evaluate the author's credentials in the field of their work. Just because someone completed a bootcamp doesn't automatically qualify them to give you advice on how you should go about bootcamps. Just because someone has interviewed at a fan company does not give them credibility to give you advice on how you should prepare for technical interviews. Career advice on YouTube is technically mass mentorship and mentoring someone requires years and years of training and experience. And this evaluation needs to be made not only for the channel as a whole, but on a per video basis, because not all videos are made the same. I personally do my best to make videos that genuinely help my audience. And most of my videos are driven by questions that you guys ask on Instagram. That's why I don't always have the most popular videos. But then if I do want to help more people, I need to grow my channel as well. So occasionally I'll make videos that would appeal a general 
audience. So judge my videos with the same scrutiny you judge any other videos. If you're a young software engineering student, don't spend your time watching my desk setup video. Your focus should be on improving your skills, not the largest screen or the fastest laptop or the best mechanical keyboard. These don't make you a better engineer. And these also shouldn't be the reason why you try to become a software engineer. I didn't even know what a mechanical keyboard was until 2015. So use your own context to filter out the noise and find the videos that will genuinely help you. I know videos like the best programming language to learn right now, learn programming in one week, or build Instagram in 24 hours, or the dream desk setup for software engineers is all great sounding, but they're only useful if the context is right for you. If not, then cut it out, including my videos, and focus on the fundamentals first. And finally, learn to compile your own content. Like I mentioned before in this video, the trend in 2021 is all about short form content. So you watch and watch and watch all these 10 minute videos and you still feel lost. It's because you're not cataloging what you're watching. Take notes while you watch, organize them into categories, review them later and come up with your own learning plan. Let's pick the Instagram architecture videos, for example. Take notes as you watch all the videos relating to the architecture behind how Instagram is built. Uh, you'll come across a lot of things you probably don't understand. Jot them down. For example, you come across optimistic concurrency and you have no clue what that is. Just start by searching what it means. You'll likely come across pessimistic concurrency, data contention, concurrency control, and why that is needed and ways to mitigate that. At the very least, the next time you have an idea to build a cool clone of something, you'll at least ask yourself, what about concurrency issues? Here's another example. Say you come across the term circuit breaker. You kind of know what that means in the context of electrical engineering, but what does that mean in software engineering? You start researching it and you come across things like retries, exponential backoff, rate limiters, thundering herd, and so on and so forth. And as you dig deeper about each of these, you will learn a bit more about something else. And since you're taking notes and categorizing them, just based on these two examples, you will end up having a good amount of information on concurrency and retries in distributed web applications. That's how you truly learn, by watching things that seem complicated and possibly far above your level. Then you divide them into smaller topics and dive deeper topic by topic as if you're peeling the layers of an onion to build your own catalog of information. This kind of learning will never happen if you blindly follow tutorials after tutorials. So prioritize learning over anything else. Well, unless you're watching content not related to software engineering in your spare time. But even then, I would still encourage you to spend time on things that promote growth and overall well-being like taking some useful classes on Skillshare, who have also kindly sponsored this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for lifelong learners on a variety of topics, including web development, design, freelancing, music, and communication, to name a few. There are classes for every skill level, whether you're a beginner or a pro. And one of the best things about classes on Skillshare is that they have no ads and they're just under 60 minutes in length. So it's easy to fit them into your schedule, even if you're a busy person. Speaking of being productive and focused on personal growth, I highly recommend the class Create Your Ideal Workweek by Michael, who is also the founder and CEO of Skillshare. In his class, Michael shares his rules for maximizing productivity, creating an ideal work week, and building short-term systems for long-term success. Some of the lessons in his class include building a plan, do, review strategy, exercises for prioritizing tasks, and an ideal week calendar demo. And since I also mentioned cutting out distractions like fast computers and fancy desk setups to promote a simple learning mindset, another class I recommend is Everyday Minimalism, Find Calm and Creativity in Living Simply by Erin Boyle. In her class, Erin focuses on being inventive and resourceful in any space, shifting your habits to eliminate daily stress, cherishing what's beautiful and meaningful, and let go of what's not, and getting purposeful with your time, energy, and money. So if you are interested in developing your curiosity and growth mindset, head over to Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free one month trial of the premium membership so that you can start your own learning journey. Look, here's the summary of my whole point. If you want to be a strong software engineer, stop bouncing around 10 different stacks and focus on building strong foundations on just a few. Stop blindly following tutorials and instead prioritize growing your skill set by being selective about the content you spend time on. YouTube is an amazing place with amazing content, but not all content is made the same. 
As a consumer, it is your responsibility to evaluate what's right for your own goals. Make YouTube be something that helps your career, not something that causes you more stress, confusion, and insecurity. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope this video is useful. If it was, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more software engineering and tech content. Feel free to leave a comment below. I usually read them all. If you want to reach out to me personally, hit me up on Instagram at engineering with Utsav. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.